Salashor, slightly used, slightly used, Pigment Salashor. I am terrified of getting old. Especially after this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Now, you might look at me and say, hey, Mon, you're not even 30. You're nowhere near being old. You shouldn't be afraid. My response is this. For my entire life, Generation Y, my generation, has been the youngest generation on the planet. We've been the newest, most exciting demographic until something horrible happened. The millennials came. <laughs> the new generation, young and exciting and eager and egotistical and self-righteous and jerks. <laughs> now Generation Y is playing second fiddle. We're the world's middle child, replaced by this virus of beaver fever. I'm not old, not yet. But for the first time in my life, I'm not new. I'm slightly used. <laughs> like a shoe. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a slightly used shoe. So you say, oh, we're growing old. That's just part of life. Why are you afraid of it? Because I know what's to come. Every adult has this moment in their life where they go, I become my parents. <laughs> because that's all we are, right? We're some <laughs> genetic mix-up of your mother and father. Now, for many of you, that's completely okay. But for me, we'll just say I have a lot of hereditary hurdles to overcome. <laughs> See, my father's a foreigner. And like many foreigners, sometimes has a hard time acclimating to American cultural norms and does ridiculously embarrassing things, <laughs> like negotiate the price of shampoo at the checkout line at Target. <laughs> anytime he did this when I was younger, he'd look at me and say, Paymon, you can't run from this, it's in your genes. Now, a confused eight-year-old Paymon would look down at his Levi's and say, well, can't we just wash them? If I only knew then what I know now, you can't run from genetics. So I looked at the older members of my family, my grandmother, 81, born and raised in Tennessee, a true Southern belle. Will I be the one to get the South to rise again? Probably not. I can't understand a thing she says. She only talks the Southern euphemisms. The only thing I know for sure is something about a one-legged cat in a sandbox jumping over a nickel to save a dive, and then really deals her pickle. <laughs> And then there's this long list of descriptive words that describe absolutely nothing, like thingamajig, what's a majigger, do floppy, do me, can do that. It's a remote control! <laughs> but that's not the worst part. The worst part is the political incorrectness. See, the more politically incorrect she gets, the more it sounds like racism. And the more racist it sounds, the more downright offensive it feels. And at some point, you just have to shrug your shoulders and say, she's old. She's from a different time. But got me to thinking, in our era of political correctness, what things do we say now that will be absolute heresy in 50 years? <laughs> I see my 80-year-old self having lunch with my future grandson at some restaurant saying, pass me my insulin from my diabetes. And everybody in the restaurant goes, <gasps> and my grandson gets beat red with embarrassment. Grandpa, you can't say that. D word. It's insensitive. They're called pancreatically challenged. <laughs> oh, don't be such a hipster. <gasps> now the waiter's dropped his tray, his mouth wide open. Grandpa, you can't say hipster. Not since the Trump administration. <laughs> the words of my father resounding in my head. It's in your genes. I think of him. I think of him and his father. Because they're kind of the same person, only my dad is just a younger version of my grandfather. Every year that passes, both their faces get a little bit whiter, their ears point out a little bit more, and that ever-growing bald spot on the back of their head takes more and more of their hair. Now my grandfather, hunched over on his cane, is just as socially awkward as my dad, only compounded by the fact that despite living in America for 50 years, he still doesn't speak English. He confuses his subject and his verb in his sentence. 
He's sort of like a like a Persian Yoda, giving ridiculous <laughs> advice. Bema, <laughs> cucumber you must eat. Diabetes it will cure. Bema, <laughs> watermelon. Yes, watermelon you must eat. Skinny it will make you. And I think to myself, is this it? Am I destined to be some politically incorrect fortune-telling Muppet man? It's times like this, times of deep introspection, that I'm glad that I'm slightly used. But then my best, friend, best friend's mom completely shatters that idea. Oh, Paymon, bless your heart, when you walked in, I thought you were your dad. You're looking so much like him. <laughs> it has begun. <laughs> Are my ears getting pointier? Is my cheeks getting bigger? Am I going bald? This downward spiral I descend into, stealing my girlfriend's facial cream, looking up Botox prices, taking strange foreign youth supplement supplements I found on the internet, taping my ears back, all to find myself in this delusion of staying young forever, and then it all falls apart. The tape pops out, I come down from the all-natural supplements. <laughs> my cheeks pop out, bald spots start showing, and I think it's inevitable. No matter how much I fear it, and I do fear it, one day I'll be 80 years old having lunch with my future grandson and say, mm, insulin, I need diabetes, I have. And the whole restaurant will go, <laughs> and my grandson will shrug his shoulders and say, he's old, he's from a different time. Thank you, judges. Thank you, esteemed guests. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you,